This is the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast with Nick Cavan. Uh, Everybody, welcome into the Greg Bedard Patriots Podcast here with uh, Mike Giardi. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network, where right now you can bet on a Super Bowl winner and you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. So if you bet on the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl, which probably isn't great odds, I don't know, they win 13, 14 games. You get bonus bets. I love those bonus bets. I use them all the time. It's like free money. So uh, so we're here with Mike, and uh, we've both been at camp every day. This is a good breather. They have the in-stadium practice tonight. This is Friday afternoon. We just heard from the assistant coaches um, earlier. That's always um, – a huge event around here and very newsworthy. Uh, tonight is the in stadium practice, which where they don't really do much. And plus the weather is looking really iffy for tonight. They are off on Saturday. So this is sort of a good breather. It's sort of like the end of the first week of practice next week. We have the Patriots Texans game at home. And so we're just going to go through some things. So first, some uh, hot topic issues, and then we'll give you some general thoughts on the offense and defense. And then uh, Mike's been watching the passing drills a lot more. Inten- Actually, I haven't watched them at all. I've been focusing on the big boys as usual. Uh, so Mike's going to give you his impressions of the wide receivers and the defensive backs. I'm going to give you my impressions of the offensive linemen and the defensive linemen. Uh, but first, we're going to start with Jack Jones, who seems uh, he hasn't been here very long, but uh, he always seems to be a topic of conversation. So the latest incident involving Jack, Mac, uh, Jack Jones was during Thursday's practice, about halfway through, uh, they were doing team drills. The defensive backs were wearing pads on their hands to keep them from um, you know, basically clutching and grabbing the receivers, which I think Mike will uh, agree has been an issue uh, in the last few days. Um They've been doing a lot of that. And so there was an out pass to Kendrick Bourne that Jack Jones was in coverage of. I was watching through my binoculars. I could have sworn that he caught the ball. Mike Pellegrino sounded today that Jack Jones made a great play. Whatever happened, Jack Jones got very animated, threw off the pads that were on his hands, was jawing, I think, with Pellegrino. Uh, he was hot under the collar. He was going down the sideline. I saw at that time, I think it was Sean Wade, Adrian Phillips tried to calm him down. That didn't do much good. Then he walked off the field with Jabril Peppers, had his arm around him, talking to him. Jack Jones went off the field, came back 20 minutes later, talked to uh, Jalen Mills for a while or listened to Jalen Mills for a while. Mac Rowe talked to him at one point. And so, obviously, we don't know, know exactly what happened in the moment. Did he get kicked out of practice? Which is the normal run of course there. It's possible he walked off on his own volition, which I don't think I've ever seen. I think the only time I've ever seen it, and I said this on TV last night, was when Kenny Britt was here. And Kenny Britt, at one point, just started walking off the field and playing with his kids while practice was going on. I've never seen anything like that. Needless to say, Kenny Britt wasn't here much longer after that. Um, so we don't know exactly what went on. Um, but Mike, why don't you tell us sort of, you know, what the coaches had to say about it? You know, what was your view of it? Are you alarmed by what's going on with Jack Jones? You know, sort of all that stuff. Jack Jones is 25 years old, Greg, and there is a decided lack of maturity there. Uh, and I think you saw that again yesterday. Now, look, there's a balance here because there is talent. I think Gerard Mayo, when we talked to him today, didn't want to get into the incident, actually preferred us to go talk to Coach Pellegrino or to Coach Belichick, who's not available, um, to have conversations with them about what happened. And as uh, you detail, Pellegrino just basically said, look, I have conversations with all my players and I'm not going to share what was said. Uh, to Jack. And that's pretty much where he left it. Um, But there's, he's been involved in our news and in their news a little bit too much here since arriving to the Patriots. I mean, last year we know how the season ended for him. And then there was some social media chatter between him and Bert Breer when Bert reported the whole thing about him talking back to Belichick. He insists he didn't do it. I've heard otherwise. I believe you've heard otherwise as well. 
Uh, certainly wasn't one of the big thing, things there was he wasn't doing or showing up on time for rehab for his knee, which sidelined him for a bit there, which is also concerning. You want the player to get back as soon as possible. Then we have the offseason thing with the guns at the airport. Um, and I know and just in talking to people even before yesterday happened that there's a concern internally about how Jack will handle this. It's hard to be focused on football when the Chargers are pretty serious. And maybe yesterday was, again, sort of a little bit of an unraveling of him from an emotional standpoint because of what's lingering there. But not a good look. Um, makes you wonder how much longer they're going to put up with it. Um, again, some people think he's better than I think he is, but he's still I think he's still a, a, a usable player for them in that secondary, a good piece for them. So uh, it, it's it's complicated for sure, but they need him to get his head straightened as possible. Yeah, I, I just don't know how much longer they can keep going on like this. I mean, how many how many chances is this guy going to get? I mean, just in the span of six months, he had the team suspension, the gun thing, and now this. And, you know, look, he's a good player. He's got, you know, ball skills, you know. But, you know, at a certain point in time, Belichick is going to have to get serious and weigh, you know, the uh, the good that Jack can bring versus the distraction that Jack is and and the problem that he's been to this point. And I don't think that's opinion. I think that's fact. He's been he's been a problem. Um and you know, you couple it with you couple it with, you know, Matthew Judon is doing his thing. Trent Brown hasn't suited up in pads. Like you know, I, I couldn't help but wonder, like, you know, leaving yesterday's practice, like, you know, what the hell's going on around here? Like, you know, this is this is not the Patriots team and program that we're used to. And and look, times change and you can't coach and run a program in 2023 like you did in 2004. I think we all, you know, understand that. But you know, the bottom line with Jack Jones that I keep coming back to is, you know, like you said, he's 25 years old. This is not a 21-year-old kid, 22-year-old kid. You know, this is not a guy who just all of a sudden had a bad run of luck and can't get out of his own way, which you see. I mean, this is this is a litany years of this stuff. And, you know, that you think he already – feels like he needs to walk the straight and narrow and then he throws a nutty at practice and and walks off like if it's by his own volition and he basically walked off the field I don't know how Belichick can tolerate that that is that is quitting on your team that is quitting quitting on your teammates and your coaches I mean I I said that he got kicked out of practice I mean I can understand that you know if he mouse off whatever heat of the moment go cool off come back when you're ready I understand that but you know, some some people who viewed it think that he walked off on his own, and I, I just don't know how Belichick can let that stand. I mean, if, there's got to be some sort of punishment. If it's if it's not, he's he's just gone now. Then they need to make him sit and watch or something like that because I I just they can't keep doing this. I I just don't think they can. And, you know, the thing was, he's getting more and more reps sort of with the ones, right? We've seen yeah. John Jones sort of slide back into the slot more in recent days. And and look, there's some positive, as you mentioned, he is a ball hawk. He's around the ball a lot. He gets his hand on the football a lot. And he was doing that at various points over the last couple of days. So, you know, I, I think I was looking at it a couple of days ago. I tweeted like, well, Gonz Gonzalez on one side, Jack on the other, John on the inside. That might bring your most – um I guess the best look at corner that you could get, you know, in terms of there's some length on the outside, obviously Gonzalez with really good length and Jack at five eleven, with some long arms, pretty good there as well. And then putting John in his most natural place where he's been a really good slot corner for the last couple of years. Like that's probably uh, their ideal lineup at this juncture. And then, like you said, he, he does this. And I, I'll give you this too. When he came back on the field and I detailed this on Boston sports journal, you know, as you mentioned, Matt Groh came over to him immediately. He took a knee sort of away from everybody. Matt Groh was with him for a minute, gave him a pat on the head. Then Jalen Mills came over and did most of the talking. And then Jabril Peppers later, his practice was ending. But he never really re-engaged with his teammates. They had to come to him. And even when the defense switched sides um, for, in terms of field position, Jack went from one part of the sideline to the other 
he didn't come back with the group. He was set back from the group and set away from the group. And I don't know, like what guys were trying to embrace him. And as we talked about, guys were trying to talk to him and get him sort of in a better place. And it just seemed like he was on his own program there as well. And, you know, cornerbacks were signing autographs after practice. And I was like, well, they're not going to have him do that. And then he literally went over there. And I think he was over there for like two minutes. And then he ran back in. And that was that. So um, just something we're going to have to keep watching here because it is. It's, uh, it feels like there's a lot of strikes against the player who has potential. But is he, is he really all that? Is he worth that kind of trouble? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, like you said, when he came back, like it, you you would think like, all right, you go in and cool down. All right, you know, I made a mistake. Maybe go apologize to a couple people and be like, you know, I'm ready when when my number's called. Instead, he came back and it looked like he was throwing himself a pity party. You know, way in the back, head down. Guys are talking to him. He's not really engaging. Like I, I just, I just don't know if this can go on much longer. Um, I, I really don't. Um, other sort of news of the day, you know, we heard from the assistant coaches. Uh, we heard from Bill O'Brien. He, of course, was asked about Mac Jones and sort of the hierarchy of the room. And while, you know, he gave the usual response, you know, it, it, my impression of what Billy had to say was that, you know, he, he, he definitely was more glowing about Mac than anybody else. He made sure to include everybody, including Trace McSorley, you know, but he did say probably – you know, his best court was, but Mac has done a really good job. He's worked extremely hard. I really, really enjoy coaching him. I said to somebody earlier that asked a question, it's one of the better quarterback rooms I've ever been a part of. They work hard. They're very smart. They're good guys. They care about winning and they're here very early in the morning and they stay late to get the job done. It's been a great group uh, to be around. Um, you know, I, I'm sure talk radio I haven't even heard yet. They're on right now. I'm sure they're going to make a big deal out of, you know, how, how come they don't talk about him as the number one quarterback? How come they don't like Mike, I'll be interested to get your thoughts, but you know, I, New England's a different place. They talk in a different way than any other place. You know, Mac Jones certainly didn't earn anything last year, has to reestablish himself. I think he's done a good job of that in this training camp. I think he's the clear starter. Zappy is going to get his chances um, to impress probably even more going forward, but Mac's still going to get a majority of the reps and, you know, but unless Mac Jones completely fumbles the ball and turns the ball over and the offense is stagnant, I, I don't think, I don't see Bailey getting much of a shot. I think Mac's definitely going to start the season opener. Uh, but you know, look, things can change. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to sit here and be definitive about it because who knows what happens? You know, it, it, who plays against the Texans? The joint practices with the Packers and Titans will probably be uh, the biggest factors in all this. Bailey will. I can tell you right now, Bailey's going to get some snaps with the ones in those joint practices. It just comes with the territory. But you know, where where do you sort of see the quarterback discussion at this point? Yeah, I think Mac's been the better quarterback basically maybe for all but one practice here during this stretch. And look, some of the stuff in the beginning for both of them wasn't awesome. You know, we, I think we saw in the early days the defense sort of dominated. There's been a nice uptick from the offense here. The one thing that I made sure to point out in my article, and I think you um, yesterday, and you pointed out in, in your camp notes as well, is there was a little, little bit of a change yesterday, right, in terms of, rotating personnel Mac was still getting the first team offensive line but there was three straight periods where he was working with twos and threes at receiver and Bailey was getting the quote-unquote ones Devontae Parker Juju Smith-Schuster uh Kendrick Bourne and working with them so you know after getting one first team rep on whatever that was Wednesday then to have that happen on Thursday again just sort of a little bit of an expansion a little bit of an opportunity for him to do some more things with you know, better personnel, albeit, you know, for Zappi in front of, you know, the we're talking about the third offensive line at this point because there's so many bodies hurt that the first offensive line is not really the first offensive line. So, you know, I, I, I think it's it was worth noting, but at this point I don't see any reason why there should be a sea of change and that, that Zappi has, you know, somehow worked his way ahead of Mac or or even. It just – there was a little bit of a, of a door opening from Bill just in terms of that, and, and we'll have to see how it – yeah, it plays out going forward. Yeah. 
let's sort of move on to our general thoughts so far. Um, my thoughts on the offense um, right now, like, you know, I think it's been good. It's certainly better than last year. Um, that's not difficult. Um, but I haven't been, you know, overly impressed. Um, I think some of that has to do with the offensive line, which is in shambles at this point where they really have only like one bona fide starter. And that's David Andrews out there um, in terms of padded practices and things like that. Um, pressure has been a problem. I think it's been more of a problem for Zappi and McSorley. That's probably because of, you know, like you said, they're they're going with the second and third teamers out there. Um, you know, I like the variety that they've shown in the passing game, the, the, the movement, um, motion, different types of stuff. You could tell that it's tripping up the defense a little bit. It's stuff that they're not used to seeing from the Patriots and that's good. Um, you know, I think Max has been good. I think he's been efficient. I think the offense in general, the word I would use is efficient. I don't think it's gangbusters. I think a lot of the passes are of the check down short variety. They haven't gone downfield very much. That could just be a progression that they're building to. Let's start with the basics. And I think Mac needed to do that. I think Mac needed a reset. And I think that's what they're doing. Uh, but, you know, I know some other people observe practice and, you know, they think the offense is doing awesome. I mean, I think they're doing well, but I haven't been blown away by anything. Um, it hasn't really changed my thinking about the team yet, but it's it's still very, very early. There's a long ways to go. Um, I, I If I had to assess where this offense is, I would say it's sort of like where Mac was at the end of his rookie year. You know, when when Josh McDaniels tightly stage managed Mac Jones, that's normally needed with a rookie quarterback. It's no reflection on Mac. You just, that's the progression. And I think they're back trying to get him to do the simple stuff well. I think he's doing it well. I think he's getting him in and out of plays a lot better. Certainly, he, he didn't have that opportunity last year. So, you know, I think the offense has been better. You know, Devontae Parker is still catching some 50-50 balls. Juju Smith-Schuster seems to be improving, you know, every day. Kendrick Bourne hasn't done a whole lot. Hunter Henry's probably been the best guy. Pop Douglas has been the best receiver in my mind. Mike kosicki has been invisible. Tyquan Thornton hasn't been on the field. So, you know, when you put all that together, it's hard to be uh, too complimentary about the offense. But I think they're, I think they're building something, and I think they're off – to a good start, and I'll be interested to see once they get a full offensive line and get the running back, uh, the running game going. I think it'll be even better. But you know, right now, I, I'd say you know they're doing a good job, but I, I wouldn't go crazy about it. W what have you seen, Mike? Yeah, I would say uh, efficient, not explosive to this point. I think it's you sort of detailed that there's a lot of underneath stuff, a lot of quick stuff, which I'm by the way fine with. I, you know, we get into this, this so that you got to push the ball down the field. Yeah, there are times for that. But they made their living for the better part of 20 years, and it's Tom at quarterback, where they just picked you apart underneath. And I'm fine with that. I think you can be a successful offense doing that as long as, you know, there are there is a play here or there. You can stretch the scene, whether it's with Gusecki or maybe Taekwon gets out there and actually shows you something and stretches the field vertically from the outside and opens some stuff up underneath, which I think, you know, Billy has his eyes on. I think that's part of what they're going to want to do here. I think the other thing that's really interesting to me is, and you were just talking about it, is the best receiver has been Demario Douglas. Now, again, we're eight days into this thing, uh, practice nine on Friday. Is that sustainable? Um, you know, this I, I, he's he's drawn my attention every day. At first, it was sort of out of curiosity. I, he made a play there. He made a play here. And then he starts stringing these plays together. And then you're looking at how they're utilizing him and the units that he's working with and playing more with Mac. And designing some stuff, there's been a lot of stuff sideways, right? Where they put one of the receivers, multiple at times, in motion, uh, arc motion. And he's been one of the recipients of the football off of that. So to me, is that a sign that they're we're giving you a little bit more? We're giving you a little bit more, and he's handling it. And so we have to watch now how that continues to progress going forward because it's definitely been a little bit of a surprise, right, to have a young player like that step up you know, six round pick and deliver basically every single day. Um, that's not normally how it goes, right? You, we, we saw last year with Thornton before he got hurt, like 
I had a good day of practice. Then the next day, ooh, that wasn't, you know, he didn't look like he was very involved or boy, he had a, tr- had a hard time getting off the jam. With Douglas, every single day has been noteworthy that he's delivered plays. And again, don't want to get overly caught up in it, but the fact that it continues to repeat itself leads you to believe that maybe there is an opportunity for him to carve out an actual real role in this offense when the regular season rolls around. Defensively, I think the the Patriots have been, you know, overall pretty good. I think the best um, part of their game that I've seen so far is their, you know, the pressure packages, the games. Now, you know, that being said, um, I think the other hand of that is the offensive line struggles that they're having. I mean, this is what we've seen so far. Them getting some free rushers and things like that is not is not all that unusual to what we see against bad offenses and bad quarterbacks that we see during, you know, the regular season. And and I think that in the current state of the offensive line, I think, you know, the, the Patriots up front are not good. You know, they're, they're not even average. And so, you know, and I think, I think the linebackers have done a pretty good job. Uh, you know, I still think that they are slow as a group. We'll see, you know, as soon as Marte Mapu can get the red jersey off and get involved, maybe that changes. I mean, it should change. Um, I, I, I will say I've been interested that, you know, Juwan Bentley is doing, I don't know if you've noticed this, Mike, but he's doing a lot more of the Dante Hightower stuff in terms of being on the line and then dropping back. Like, you know, he's he's sort of going between edge and linebacker, and that's, you know, they get – the, the safeties involved with that, of course, it's about throwing different looks. I think the safeties have been fine. I, I do think that, you know, Kyle Duggar has probably given up, you know, he's given up some place um, to tight ends and, and, uh, and things like that. I think that the, I'm a little bit worried about the cornerbacks and I'll be interested, you know, after the break, um, I'm going to get Mike's views on sort of the, what he's seen in the one-on-ones um, so far, because I haven't watched any of those. So I'll be interested to see just, you know, because we, I don't know. I mean, it seems like they're playing a lot of zone and things like that so far in camp. So it's hard for me to see in the team stuff exactly, you know, how somebody's playing press and, and things like that. But, uh, you know, the cornerbacks, it seems like they're having a little bit of issue with the physical play with the bigger receivers. And they did Devontae Parker, um, Juju Smith-Schuster, even Kendrick Bourne at this point, you know, because he's put on a lot of muscle, is bigger, it seems. And the Patriots are just small and or skinny at cornerback. I mean, Gonzalez is tall, but he's a young kid and he's not used to playing physical professional football yet, you know, long ways to go for him. And I'm I'm sure he'll get there by the regular season. Um, You know, Jack Jones is great ball hawk, but man, that guy is skinny. Skinny is all get out. And, you know, John Jones isn't a big guy. Uh, Marcus Jones certainly is not a big guy and, and has issues with that, especially in the red zone in coverage. Um, so, you know, I, I, I still think, I think the defense is a work in progress and, you know, a lot of it's going to depend on how much pressure they're able to get against the better offenses, the better quarterbacks and, and how that marries up with the coverage. What have you noticed from the defense so far? Well, you know, you and I keep our own stats separate from you, you read a lot of different stats in different places, but I think you had them for 30, was it 31 sacks total? I think was your number between Zappy and Jones in terms of the number yeah, of times they were back? Yeah, I think it was Zappy had 20 and Jones had nine in, okay, in so my latest calculation. I had, I, had, I had 33. Now, again, mm-hmm. this some of this stuff that you, you can't put the quarterback on the ground, so you're you're sort of – is would, would he have gotten that ball off? Would he have been able to sidestep that rush? There's a couple that are questionable, but that's a huge number. And to your point, a lot of that is like what's going on on the offensive line. You don't have to turn out there in full pads. Strange has been down for several days. Really, the lone consistent um, piece in this entire puzzle has been David Andrews in the middle, but there's been revolving doors at guard, revolving doors at right and left tackle. Looks like, as I think you've talked about, Connor McDermott is probably your right tackle, and Riley Reef's going to be your swing at this point. We still haven't seen Calvin Anderson and the way that Bill Belichick talked about him. Didn't really get a lot of insight. Didn't feel like Calvin Anderson was close to being back on the field. Um, so that's, again, something to want modern on offense. But, boy, they've generated a ton of pressure. Uche has stood out to me. It's like he's mm-hmm. in the backfield. We get into team periods, and he's in there two, three times, you know, where he's raising his hand as he runs by, by the quarterback, or you see the offensive lineman be like, damn it, you know, like I couldn't keep my hands on him. Um, 
And that just sort of builds on the things that I was told about his work in the off season that just, you know, he, he's always had confidence in himself, but he was able to do it last year and stay on the field for 15 games. That only took his confidence to another level. Now he's added more to his bag. I think he's the potential to have another, you know, I'd be disappointed if he doesn't end up with double digit sacks, got to stay healthy, but he certainly has that capability. And he's doing this right now without Matthew Judon participating. So it's not like the offense is, and they're not game planning, but it's not like the offense says, Oh, we got Judon on this side. No, it's Uche is the guy out there and Uche is, he's doing damage. Anthony Jennings has shown up a few times. Now, whether that's yep. again, just um, him taking advantage of, of some of the backups uh, or whether this is something that's sustainable. I mean, remember they, fairly high pick for them uh, and it just hasn't hasn't taken hold because of injuries but I think they're they're definitely from a pressure standpoint from moving people around we've seen peppers off the edge we've seen Jalen Mills Jalen Mills was actually working with the pass rushing coach whose name is escaping me Greg um at this very moment uh, Joe Lee <laughs> thank you um yeah working with him on his own like you're going to come off the edge like this is how I want you to attack it so I think there's some there's a variety of things that they're willing to do. Duggar, we've seen get involved in that. So they have the potential because of some of the body types that they have there to, to you know, sort of change how they attack and sort of leave a quarterback guessing. Like, is it is the pressure coming from here? See the linebacker on this play or see a safety? Where's it coming from? I think that's something that they certainly could use to their advantage going forward. That's been nice. Um, we'll get more into the corner play. I've liked Phillips. I think – He's done a nice job so far. I think Duggar has been hit or miss in coverage, as you mentioned. And I think Jalen Mills has sort of been hit and miss in coverage as well. And I still find myself thinking as we get closer and closer to week one, I mean, you just mentioned we got we got a preseason game on Thursday. Like, you really, ideally, you want it to be one guy in center field. Like, who's that guy? And I don't, again, I don't know that anyone's emerged and said definitively, it's going to be me a large part of the time. Uh, so we will take a break here to tell you about FanDuel. Then we'll be back with a few quick hit thoughts on uh, the two lines and the cornerbacks and receivers. Uh, football season is about to kick off, and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet a, a bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win in the regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. You can use bonus bets on spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sportsbook. That's FanDuel.com slash Boston. Uh, so, okay, Mike, I'm just going to throw out some names. Let's start at – we'll start at receiver and just give me a thought on each guy, you know, what you've seen. It could be in team. It could be in one-on-ones. Uh, Devontae Parker. You mentioned winning jump balls. I've seen him lose some, and he's lost some mm. as to, to smaller guys. John Jones, like, out fighting him for the football. Like, dude, just can't happen. Like, that's what you're here for. You should post that dude up. That should be your football. Um, largely, with the exception of a couple plays over the last couple of days, largely not really done anything here in camp so far, to my eyes. Tyquan Thornton's basically been missing in action. Um, Juju Smith Schuster. Gonna get the ball a lot, I think. I think they're gonna they're gonna find ways to um make him earn his money. It's gonna be a lot of underneath stuff, I think, but we've seen some stuff again where I mentioned they're throwing sideways as well. Um, you can just tell he's he's if he can stay healthy, he's he's a professional receiver. He's the he's the in theory, he should be their best one. Kendrick Bourne. So you mentioned him gaining weight and its strengths. I've wondered a little bit about his quickness. And it's one of the things that I liked about him the last two years is that I, as I've said it before, I've made up the word. He's the, the twitchiest receiver they have. Um, he doesn't look as twitchy to me. There's a little bit more physicality to his game, which I think we saw on Thursday when he, he had a pretty good stretch in team period. I think he caught five of seven targets in team period, but I'm curious to see how that plays going forward because I thought that that was one of the things that made him, Someone, yeah, you can put him outside, but you can put him inside and do different things. And um, to this juncture, he doesn't look as quick to me as he has. Kayshawn Booty. Did zero. Missed a practice. Came back, made a nice catch on the sideline that was out of bounds, but showed good body control. But then the last couple of days has popped a little bit and shown some work. You know, he got some plays with 
with Mac, as we mentioned, because they were alternating groups and putting the, the twos and threes with, with the, the number one quarterback at this point. But I think whatever, it was worth the roll of the dice. And, and you've seen a couple things that make you think like, all right, we'll see if this keeps progressing, but it, it was nice to see him get a couple plays together and, and uh, you know, show a little bit. How, how fast is he? Like a, I, yeah, I haven't a, really noticed it. It doesn't jump out. No, no. And that's, and it's actually, as you, you mentioned that, I'm sure we're going to get to Demario, like Demario's speed quickness pops to me. What I've noticed about Ute in the last couple of days is that it's the body control more than anything and being able to almost, even though he's not a huge guy to be a little bit more physical at the catch point. So uh, I have not seen that sort of that burst. And, and I'm sure what people remember from watching the YouTube clips when he was a freshman at LSU. Sounds a little bit like Malcolm Mitchell a little bit. Yes. From a on-field perspective, maybe but off-field perspective, a little different. I think, you know, for people that know sort of um, LSU people weren't all that disappointed to see Tayshawn Lee where, you know, Malcolm, I think everybody spoke very highly of him at Georgia. And oh yeah. Well, you know, without question, I just meant, you know, Malcolm wasn't much of a, um, you know, a burner, even though I think he did have better speed um, than Kayshawn, but you know, both had very good body control, good on the back shoulder passes. I see them, you know, similar there. And, you know, you talk about the off field stuff. I'm, I'm kind of surprised he's uh, made it this far after, you know, you talk to some of the people at LSU, but Hey, it's a, uh, it's a fresh start and you get to, you get to earn your, your place around here in the pros. Uh, Demario pop Douglas. Super quick, faster. I think than I thought Jabril peppers mentioned it. I think it's a good point that he's, there's a good physicality to him, even though he's 5'8", 192. I think we talked about um, the last time sort of he does – they haven't had a body – they don't have a body type like him in terms and, – and a skill set like him where you can put him in the slot and he's going to run that return route, uh, some of the option route stuff, and get open quick. And, and to this point, again, it's just eight days, and, you know, we're still not – embracing full contact yet uh there's been bits and pieces of it that he's been able to hold up to that so i'm curious like i think the you mentioned the joint practice that like that's going to be interesting to me when when guys are going at him um and then get him you know on repeated um drills over a couple of days and then in the game like what does that look like because to this point he's he's held up well he's he's definitely he's been as surprising as anyone in camp as far as i'm concerned it's been uh, i've heard some chatter about him possibly excuse me about him possibly being the third down back. Like, I think that's a joke. I think <laughs> yeah. like, look, is, is he a little, is, is he a tough little physical dude? Yes, he is. But, and do I think he can line up on occasion in the backfield and you're looking for, you know, some sort of mismatch type of thing, you know, a game plan thing. Yeah, absolutely. He can do that. But if you think that Demario Douglas at his size can be a third down back full-time third down back in this league, I think you're smoking crack. Like, you know, as soon as, Every team's gonna. Every team's gonna. If they see him in the backfield. They're gonna send like a oh. Kyle Duggar type guy just screaming into him. And yeah, you can run the slip play every once in a while. But you know, as soon as the Patriots are successful on that once, they'll have the defense will have an adjustment to cover him if he just you know slips the block and and goes out. They'll have a plan for that. I just think there's no chance of that. Occasionally, yes, uh, obviously he can do that. We've seen that in practice. But full time third down back. No chance. Yeah, that just seems like a scary proposition to entrust a rookie who isn't a you know he's a wide receiver and you're going to put him there. Like let's 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 let him worry about playing wide receiver and doing that and if he can make an impact there and then who knows? Like you said, you can definitely and we've seen it with a bunch of guys over the years too. Yeah, every once in a while they line somebody up in the backfield that you don't expect in the backfield. But to ask that guy to be a regular on blitz pickup seems like you're asking for your quarterback to get absolutely destroyed. Uh, Trey Nixon. I just think he's another guy. He's had a couple plays. Mm -hmm. He had a nice one from, I think it was from Zappi. It was about 40 yards down the field. I think he got, I'm trying to think. I think it was Sean Wade, who's on the wrong end of things a lot. Uh, he beat Sean Wade down the field. But I, I just think he's a practice squad guy. Uh, you know, if something really bad happened, he's someone you could throw in there and he, he'd run the play right. But I, I just, I don't see much there. Uh, Raleigh Webb, who actually, you know, I 
I've been a little impressed with Raleigh Webb. Like he's he he makes plays. He's pretty good. Pretty good athlete. He's a really good athlete. Yeah, and you know one of the reasons they brought him here too was the special teams uh, capabilities. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's made a couple nice plays in the passing game. They did throw one to him sideways as well that um, Zappi pretty much got him killed on. Christian Gonzalez kind of smoked him in the flat. He did hang on to the ball. Then he had a bad drop in one-on-ones. So, like, I, I wonder I'm, – I'm curious about the consistency of his hands because I've seen him fight the ball a couple times too, and I'm wondering if that's – is that nerves? Is that just those hands? That's what they are, and that's one of the things that holds him back because, again – there is some good athleticism. What uh, I, I'm curious, I mean, Hunter Henry's done well. We don't really need to talk about him. You know, Ferkser's like, you know, a third or fourth down. Sokol, I think, has done, you know, a really nice job and probably been, outside of Hunter Henry, the best sort of two-way tight end. He's done a really nice job blocking um, on the edge. But I'm just, you know, what have you seen out of Gesicki and sort of like the one-on-ones? He's been sort of a non-factor in team. I think the Patriots are having a tough time figuring out how to use him because he's not, it's not just like, you know, all right, let's plug him into the Aaron Hernandez role because he's not that type of athlete. Nobody is. But, like, I don't know. Does, does Gasecki have any juice in the one-on-ones that you've seen? He has struggled a little bit with the physicality from some of the safeties that he's faced in one-on-ones. Um, look, the length is no question. He does have juice in his legs, but he has struggled with sort of at times when they engage with him of getting off the engagement. His hands are soft. There's no question about it. I've seen him, you know, kind of stick that paw out there every once in a while, and he makes a play that way. But it definitely feels like they're searching for a place that he's going to succeed in this offense. And I think that obviously they had a plan for him when they when they signed him. And I don't think either he hasn't fulfilled his end of the bargain, or they still they're still sort of sorting that out because at this point he feels a little bit lost amongst the group. I think we've seen. No matter my feelings overall on the on the wide receiver group beyond Juju and Douglas, like these guys had a moment or two in camp. Gasecki still hasn't had that moment yet in team. And then I go back to like seven on seven, Greg, and I say, like, if anybody's gonna pop in seven on seven, isn't it the six seven guy who runs well? Who's yeah. not who, you know, there's been he's a he's a move receiver. So when I say he's not tough, I mean just he doesn't play like a typical tight end because he's not a tight end. I would have thought that he would have popped there. He hasn't really popped in seven on seven either. So that's, I don't know, like Matt called him his guy the other day. I just, I'd like to see some of those two guys coming together and making plays. Cause to this point there hasn't been any. We've sort of talked about most of the cornerbacks, but you know, we'll end it here. Like give me your impressions of, you know, Christian Gonzalez um, to this point, And then I'll ask you among the other guys, like Amir speed, Rodney Randall, Isaiah Bolden, Quandre Mosley, Sean Wade, you know, have any of those guys, um, you know, popped it all for you, but start with Gonzalez. Cause I haven't seen a ton of him outside of teams. So I'm just wondering what you're seeing. Yeah. So like he's had some really good moments in one-on-ones. Uh, in fact, did a really nice job. Juju tried to hit him with a double move going down the seam stride for stride makes the play on the ball. Like you can see all the things that we've talked about. The one thing I would say is occasionally when there is that physicality that he's he's losing that battle. And that's I think um, uh, Douglas today said that it was a heavyweight fight between he and Devontae Parker. And Parker's, I think, won a few more than he's lost to Gonzalez, at least in the last few days. And I think some of that is just him learning like, all right, we're going to get down here. You're going to try to post me up. I got to I got to be a little bit stronger when you make your initial contact on me, because I think that's where there's it's not separation. I guess the smallest bit of separation has become because he can't, maybe he loses his balance a little bit on the, on the contact with someone like Devonte, who's, you know, obviously he's hurt a lot, but he's played a lot of games, been in the league for a long time and does um, is capable of using his body the right way. But there are, there are moments, whether it be in team or, in, or as I've said, in one on one, seven on seven, where, you see that fluidity and his ability to break on the football. And, you, you know, that gets me a little bit excited that they, they have someone like that. Um, you know, JC's only been gone for a couple of years, but I think there's, there's, there's an ability to be that sort of man corner that they haven't had or they didn't have last year. And that's uh, I think appealing for the way they want to play. Yeah. I, I would, I would term him as a pretty player. 
in more yes. ways than one. Look, he's a he's a good looking dude. Um, you know, looks the part, but he also like just in terms of his play, he's a he's a pretty player. Now, does that translate to being a dog and and being a number one shutdown corner? I think that's the big question that we'll you know we'll get an answer going forward the next couple of years. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. I want to highlight um, Marcus Jones because I think when we did our podcast a couple of weeks ago sort of to me like an X factor. How are they going to use him? We know about his athleticism. He's obviously he's, he's good with the ball. I still think I'd like to see him get some snaps on offense and maybe that will develop over the course of time. He has struggled mightily, in my opinion, one-on-ones. Douglas is kicking his butt. And again, look, some of, and I, I always say this when you're doing one-on-ones, I think it's harder to cover the inside routes yep. than the outside routes or the ones down the field, because look, there's no defensive lineman, big offensive lineman with their butts in your face, like hands up. You, there's no linebackers clogging lanes. It's just you and one other guy, you know, D- Douglas made one catch on him, but it was like, it was almost like a triple move. The play took, uh, probably, it probably took about a second too long. So it looks great. And it, you're going to chart it as a catch and it's a nice catch. Then you're going to say, well, is that really going to happen in a game? Certainly not with this offensive line. It's not going to happen in a game. So, uh, as currently constituted. So, but I just feel like there's been a lot of points in seven on seven and 11 on 11, too, where, oh, there's a catch by Bourne. Oh, who was trailing? Marcus, you know? So I, I've seen of the guys that we sort of consider the guys that would play in the secondary corner, he's one of them. And of that group, he's been to me the one who struggled the most in coverage. Um, I even say that Miles Bryant has done that. Actually, I think Miles Bryant's had a pretty good camp to this point. Um, yeah, but like, I was just, I, think we, I was yeah, just, I think we, I think we all assumed, right, Greg? Like, well, Marcus has got more skill, and like, okay, they, yep. they, they kept Miles, and he's a versatile piece. But like, you don't want to play. Well, Miles has had a good camp, and he's he's certainly done a better job in coverage by a long shot than than Marcus has at this point. Yeah, I was just gonna say. I mean, you know, everyone loves to hate Miles Bryant, but and they're not gonna like this, but. I think that Miles Bryant has been um, running well ahead of Marcus Jones to this point, and he's getting more time, and he's doing different things, and he plays into the versatility that they want on defense. And so, you know, right now, I think Marcus Jones is an afterthought to even, you know, Miles Bryant at this point. I mean, look, it's just one week, so we'll see how things move going forward. All right, we will wrap it up right there, Mike. Appreciate your insight. Make sure everybody checks out FanDuel.com/Boston. And uh, we'll be back next week uh, with more thoughts. Thanks, Mike. (laughs) 